Rich Brooks Show. Hello again, everybody. I'm Todd McKim, along with the coach, and welcome to the final show for the 1991 season. We'll take a look back at the Oregon State game. Also have a special feature on an Oregon senior who has probably got a pretty good future when it comes to his post-collegiate playing days are concerned. And preview uh, what's in store maybe next year and the recruiting trail is uh, that is the next priority for all college football teams. Well, coach, it was a uh, not the way you wanted to end the season. The Oregon State came in and played an inspired football game under uh, head coach Jerry Pettibone. Uh, your team uh, unable to consistently uh, move the football, put it in the end zone, and as a result, Oregon State came away with that 14-3 win. Well, they certainly did, uh, Todd, and I'd uh, like to congratulate Coach Pettibone and the Oregon State team because I think they, uh, they deserved the win. They outplayed us. Uh, uh, it was a close game uh, through mo much of the contest, and uh, we didn't take advantage of the opportunities we had early to get the ball in the end zone. Uh, they did, uh, and they really took the fight to us, particularly in the fourth quarter when, uh, when it was 7-3 to three and we uh, got down there and couldn't get it in the end zone and had the field goal uh, off of a bad snap uh, blocked. It seemed like it took the wind right out of the sails, uh, whatever wind we had left anyway. Uh, and they dominated, I thought, the game after that. As you looked at the beginning of the game, I, I guess you couldn't ask for a real better scenario when uh, your defense came out and got a turnover right uh, early in the ball game. You have great field position, but I guess that's kind of been the story of the last six or seven weeks. The inability to take advantage and put it in the end zone had to settle for three, but at that point, seven might have made a big difference. Well, I think there's no question seven would have made a difference. And, uh, we did move the football uh, a little bit earlier in, in, on, on that uh, uh, first quarter opportunity when we had it, the, the, our first possession, had to punt it away. Oregon State fumbled and gave us great field position, but unfortunately we were, had to settle for a field goal. We couldn't capitalize and put it in the end zone, and that's been the story certainly in the last five or six games, uh, our offense, but uh, it was as inept in this game as it's been, I think, in uh, most of the season. Defensively, I think your team, uh, as you looked at the, the plays, and we'll see in the tape, played the option portion of their spread option well. Uh, you, they did not turn the corner very often, but what seemed to hurt your team was plays between the tackles, in particular the counter play. Well, they did a good job uh, up inside on us. Uh, we uh, uh, were concerned with the outside uh, option. I thought we played it for the most part very well throughout the entire game. They did get a few plays out around the corner on us, but not very many, but uh, they split us out. Uh, we have some people playing uh, less than full strength inside, Marcus Woods, Labounty, and Farwell, and, and uh, they did a good job blocking us inside with the counter play as well as just the straight uh, second back through to the tight end side. And they, uh, they pounded it up in there, and Paulson uh, ran extremely well and, and hard, and uh, he broke a lot of tackles. And after pounding away and pounding away, then they came with uh, a play they've used uh, so far this year a couple of times, of Paulson throwing the ball to Maurice Wilson. That was the backbreaker, I guess. At that point, you were within a touchdown of taking the lead, but at that point, you had to have two touchdowns. We did. We'd have to uh, score twice uh, to take the lead after the halfback pass, and we were in man coverage, and... Uh, you wouldn't think we would bite uh, uh, off of the wide receiver on a third and 11 play uh, with a quick pitch on the option, but we did uh, because they had kind of lulled us to sleep back there, and that's what happens uh, against uh, an option team. Uh, you start playing the run, playing the run, playing the run, and all of a sudden uh, they trick you with the, uh, with the halfback pass, and they executed it extremely well and, and got the touchdown. I know as a big a disappointment as uh, the final outcome was the fact that it was the final game for the seniors, and I know you wanted them to go out on a positive note, and unfortunately it just didn't happen that way. I feel very badly for this group of seniors because they've done a lot for Oregon football, back-to-back uh, uh, -back bowl games the past two years. They uh, played a big role in that, obviously. Uh, uh, we started out this season with great expectations, played extremely well, I thought, in the opening two games of the season, and then uh, just kind of started unraveling as the season went on, and at the end of the season, uh, uh, we just weren't playing very good football. I thought we had made progress in the Arizona State game and the UCLA game and, and actually started to improve, but in the Oregon State game, uh, we just did not play up to the level we had played in recent weeks. Uh, I thought Oregon State had more intensity than we did, they executed better than we did, and they took the fight to us and, and controlled the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Well, the Ducks won the toss of the coin and elected to defer until the second half, and so Oregon State will get the football to start this game. Uh, 
Pretty good weather conditions at Autzen Stadium. Overcast skies, uh, sometimes the sun would break through, but uh, not a bad day at all for late November in the Willamette Valley. Paulson on the reception. He's knocked down by O.B. Babb. So the Beavers set up shot first and 10 after a clipping penalty at their own nine. They get a first down, and we pick it up first and 10 at the 20. There's Paulson uh, getting extra yards, about four extra after he was hit initially by Farwell. Second down and about three. Go to the draw play to J.J. Young, and he gets a first down for Oregon State. But then the defense begins to stiffen and forces uh, Oregon State eventually to punt. Slip down out there, Chad Cota forcing the play inside, and J.J. Young slipped uh, after a big gain of about one. Goes back to pass here. Uh, Shields scrambles away from pressure. But we don't contain him, and he is tackled by Muhammad Oliver. So third down and five. Shields coming out on the option. Eventually he will pitch it, and again, Young is tackled by Omni Turf after a gain of only three. So the Beavers punt it away, and now you start off and look gangbusters in this first drive here running the football. Yeah, we look like we know what we're doing. Uh, Donovan Moore picks up about uh, six on first down. Come back with the sweep again. Uh, gets some good blocks, cuts it up in there, and gets a first down. And this one was almost gone. Uh, another, another step there, a little better balance. That might have been a very long touchdown run, but Unfortunately, you'll see from the ground level here, we get excellent blocking at the point of attack. Jeff Thomason caves the whole side of the line down. And Donovan just couldn't keep his balance uh, bouncing off of two Oregon State tacklers. It's a gain of 12 and a first down after the 40-yard line. Another good gain on first down again, gaining eight yards. Ball out at the 48. Sean Burwell now in the ball game for the first time in three weeks. He picks up the first down. So it's first and 10. First pass of the afternoon for Brett Salisbury. And it's complete to Burwell. Gain of 13. We'll look at it again. Excellent protection on this play. Uh, Sean has, or Brett has all the time in the world to throw here. And he steps up in the pocket and hits Burwell out of the backfield for a first down and a gain of 13 yards. But unfortunately, the drive stalls on a close call here on third and 10. Salisbury throws. Ruled out of bounds. It uh, looked like on our coaching film that he had his foot down uh, clearly, uh, but uh, the official ruled otherwise. Good play there by Romeo Bandison on the outside option, tackling uh, Ian Shields for a loss on the play. You can see on the replay, uh, here comes Big Romeo shedding the block at the line of scrimmage, then slipping off the fullback's block and making the tackle. Defense comes up with another big play right here on second and 14. Shields has the ball popped loose by Herman O'Berry and Terrell Edwards gets the fumble recovery only the fourth of the year. Uh, I thought maybe things were going to go our way at this point. Nice job there by O'Berry. The ball's on the ground and Terrell Edwards comes in and makes the recovery. Great field position, but unfortunately just unable to move the football. Blitzed right into the hole on us there uh, and held us to no gain. Now we run the draw play and block nobody. Loss of two. So third down and 13. Salisbury. Brian Brown cannot hold on. So Greg McCallum comes in to an attempt a 37-yard field goal. And with this field goal, the three points gives Oregon the lead and it ties McCallum for second place on the all-time scoring list, tied with Bobby Moore, Derek Lavelle, the all-time leader. So that's the way Greg McCallum finishes his career, second all-time scoring list. Nice job by Matt Labounty there, getting shields uh, by the uh, nap of the neck, if you will, after faking to the fullback. Labounty comes off and you see him just reach and grab uh, the jersey right there on the neck and uh, pull him down. Loss of two. Second down and 12. There's that counter play. Paulson gets about 10. Short of the first down. So it'll be third and two from the OSU 28. That uh, unbelievable. The ball goes completely around his back. Uh, if we hit him, the ball should be out, but he gets control of it before we do, and there's no fumble on the play. And a nice run by the fullback up inside for the first down. Gain of 12. 
So it's second down and one as we pick up further action at the 45. A little uh, fool duggery here that uh, didn't fool anybody. The old alumni play didn't <laughs> work on uh, second and inches and uh, took him out of a great scoring opportunity here. I was uh, very glad to see this play run at this at this juncture because uh, they had obviously been moving the ball right down the field on us and, and this kind of broke their momentum on this drive. Chad Cota stayed home there, the strong safety number seven. Terrell Edwards forced him wide, and Chad Cota comes up uh, to make the stop. So that is the final play that we will see of the first quarter right here. Running the option. Into the short side, and a nice play over there uh, by Terrell Edwards and Chad Cota. End of the first quarter. The Ducks leading Oregon State 3 to nothing. As we pick up action in the second quarter, the Ducks have the football. Brett Salisbury going to the air, and he will throw the ball on the money to Jeff Thomason for a first down gain of 13. And here's what happens to quarterbacks when they try to stay in the pocket. Watch, uh, Brett will take a pretty good shot on this, but still complete the pass. Well, actually, uh, Sean Burwell misses his uh, protection assignment here and turns the guy loose. You can see 49 coming in from the top of your screen, and that's the man Burwell is supposed to block. Salisbury did a good job. Uh, they double covered Jeff Thomason most of the day, and uh, Brett was able to get the ball in there against uh, double coverage to Jeff on that particular play. Dangerous throw there, almost intercepted by Dennis Edwards. Well, he was hit as he was releasing the ball. Our uh, tackle on the, on the left side broke down there, and nice play here by Chad Cota coming up and making the tackle on the option for another loss. Mark Olford is now in there, excellent runner, very good quickness. Uh, I, I don't think he had all of his quickness back because of the knee injury he sustained, but a real nice play here by Chad Cota. Who has played very good football for you since uh, moving into that starting lineup. It's a redshirt freshman. Loss of three, it'll be second down and 13 from the 47. They tried inside, and Marcus Woods just kind of grabs ball carry and uh, flings him back. Holds on. Third down and 11. One of the few passes thrown by Oregon State, overthrown. Again, Oregon got it back, but unable to move it, so the defense has to come back on the field after an exchange of punts. And at this point now, Oregon State has gotten that field position throughout the course of the second quarter and uh, is in scoring territory here, but the defense holds. Nice play there by Herman O'Berry and followed up by, by Muhammad Oliver, Andy Connor, and uh, James Batista. Terrell Edwards is coming in, forcing the pitch here on the option. You can see the exchange point. Terrell Edwards forces the pitch. Uh, Herman O'Berry is getting actually almost tackled here uh, by the lead blocker. Now he gets blocked off of him, and James Batista comes along with Andy Connor and Muhammad Oliver. So after the loss, it's now third down and at 12. Try the pass. Young cannot hold on. So again, the offense unable to move it, and the Beavers get it back, but it uh, kind of sounds like a record, but that's what it was here in the second quarter. Now, this is a, a big drive for Oregon State. Almost picked off there, but this will be a drive that will put Oregon State into the lead. Second and 10, Paulson breaks a tackle right here and gets about seven extra yards. Third down and four, big play. Counter play back inside, which they hurt us with uh, all day long. Uh, Herman O'Berry makes the tackle, but gets a face mask. Knocks him out of bounds on the six, but it's moved to the three-yard line. And on first down, we make the play for a loss. A big play there by Romeo Bandison. We'll look at it again. See from the low angle here, Romeo's going to come into the backfield. Uh, right there. So go right by the fullback and make the play on the quarterback as Shields ducks under... Uh, uh, kind of like ducking the right cross. And now we have a busted assignment here. We're supposed to have somebody back up the field to check him backside here. And a busted play scores for Oregon State. So Ian Shields takes it in for the score. Jamie Burke adds the extra point, And Oregon State leads it 7-3. to three. Now kind of a strange series of events in the last 150 of this half. First of all, Salisbury completes a pass to Juan Shedrick for a first down or what would have been, and he coughs it up. Dennis Edwards recovers, but Oregon State, also in the mood to give the football away, coughs it right back up on the next play. Shields, 
fumbles. Terrell Edwards with his second fumble recovery of the day. Good job by Batista knocking the ball out, giving us an opportunity to score before the half. Uh, you can see Batista knocks the ball out as Shields is just getting ready to pitch it. And Terrell Edwards, as you mentioned, recovers his second fumble. But unfortunately, two plays later, Salisbury to throw. Thought he had Jones over the middle, but it is picked off by William Ephraim. That was a big play because you were in position maybe to get a score before the half. Well, no question. And now uh, we actually get another chance. We use our timeouts. We hold uh, Oregon State down there. We complete a pass here. Uh, fumbled again, out of bounds, fortunately. Uh, we're in a position here uh, to maybe at least get a field goal before the half. And instead of throwing uh, the ball away on this next play, you'll see, uh, I believe we get sacked. And, and uh, Well, here's the trap, and it gets trap. you a first down. Clock stops. Clock stops. After an incomplete pass, then second down and 10 with the 18 seconds remaining. No timeouts left. No timeouts. You have to throw the football away in that situation. Line up and kick the field goal, and we get sacked, and the clock runs out. So that is the end of the first half. Oregon State with the lead. Seven to three. Oregon State kicks off to start the second half, so the Ducks get the football. And you made a change at quarterback at the intermission. You went uh, with Bobby Brothers, and in this first drive, he moved the football team. And unfortunately, a penalty really probably stopped you as much as anything. Well, pretty much uh, the way it's gone, we we do some good things, and then get down where we need to do a few more, and we make a mistake. Uh, nice run by Donovan Moore, starting out uh, much like we started out the game, uh, getting the first down, running the football, doing some decent things. Uh, Salisbury's chest was bothering him. Uh, he had taken a pretty good shot, as you remember, on the flea flicker in the UCLA game, and it bothered him a little bit in practice, but he was able to practice all week and throw, but at halftime, it, it was bothering him, and uh, uh, we decided to make the change. Nice catch there uh, by Brian Brown on the sideline. Outstanding. He's done that twice this year. Kept that one foot in bounds as he drags it along the sideline. Fourth down play here. We decided to go for it. We actually had a receiver open deep, but uh, Bobby elected to run it for the first down. Now we run the draw play to Donovan Moore and picks up about four. So you're moving the ball. It's second down and six. But after a holding penalty, third down and 21. And you just can't get it done. The sack there, and so you're forced to punt the football. And this is, I mean, uh, this is kind of the way things have gone in the last couple of weeks. And even on what looks like uh, can be a good play, uh, Willie Tate can't hold on, and the ball rolls in for the touchback. It's tough over his head, but uh, if he hangs on to it, we've got him pinned down on about the five-yard line. Instead, now they start out on the 20-yard line. Good job there by Terrell Edwards, forcing the blocker back in and actually tripping up the, the back. So you get it back, seven and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter, and this is probably your best drive of the football game right here. And uh, Sean Burwell showing a little bit of... Uh, getting back to normal. Uh, doesn't quite have the, the extra step of speed here. Big gaping hole and usually uh, Burwell would have uh, another step or two of speed going through there but with the ankle bothering him uh, he wasn't able to make a longer run out of it. Makes a nice cut there. Uh, grabbed around the ankles after a gain of about four or five. Even at 80 percent or 70 percent whatever it is right now you can just see what he can do and what he means to the offense. Nice catch there by Brian Brown uh, on a little quick out. Brothers does a nice job throwing. I thought uh, Bob really executed uh, well in the first couple of series of the uh, third quarter. It's a gain of 16 as uh, Brown is bumped out at the OSU 45. The other thing Bobby can do is he can scramble, and that's what he'll do on this play right here. Nobody opens, so he just tucks it in and picks up six. The next play we see is fourth and one. Well, this is the uh, fourth down play here that I was referring to earlier. And uh, we did get the first down, but uh, we did have somebody open deep that he elected to take the safe thing and get the first down. And a great situation here, good field position. Complete now the, the pass to Vince Ferry, and we're down deep in scoring territory again. Little play action fake to Burwell. Faking off to the right-hand portion of the screen, Brothers rolls out here, finds Vince Ferry wide open, throws a little bit behind him, but Vince makes a nice catch and picks up the first down about the 25-yard line. So about four minutes to go, third quarter. Ducks uh, trailing by four. 
That was the play I really thought that his inability to cut probably hurt him as much as any other one. Yeah, he just doesn't quite have that extra step. And now we turn, turn it up inside on the belly play and we get stuffed as they blitzed right into the play. But it is a first down. Next play we see is second down and seven. Nothing there again, the blitz and Sean had nowhere to go, a loss of three. And third down and 10. Brothers looking for Brown over the middle, knocked down by Todd Soffeld, and so now you're forced to attempt a field goal. And we get a high snap here, Todd, uh, high and off to the right. Uh, McCallum with the timing messed up, plants and slips and hits the ball right into the center of the line and it's blocked. And it was like they just took the uh, balloon and punctured the air right out of it because from this point on, I thought Oregon State uh, really took the uh, the fight to us and uh, dominated the contest. A nice play here by Romeo Bandison again, uh, making the tackle for a loss. So neither team able to dent the scoreboard at the uh, third quarter mark, and as we head into the final 15 minutes of play, Oregon State has the lead seven to three. Into the fourth quarter we go. The game is still up for grabs, although Oregon State will seize uh, the momentum for good and uh, get a, an insurance score on this drive right here with about 13 minutes left to play in the game. You see Paulson inside for 12, and at this point, it just looked like Oregon State sensed that they could uh, win this football game, and they were looking for the score that would put it away. They played with a lot of uh, inspiration and enthusiasm. Andy Connor, oh, nice what a hit. Nice job there. Uh, we'd hope to do a little bit more of this, bringing quick pressure, and you can see him explode uh, on Shields. Uh, did not force a fumble, which we'd hope something like a blow like that would, but uh, good job by Shields protecting the football. Second back through, just uh, a big gaping hole, and they uh, took it up inside for a big gain. Now they run the pitch outside, and a real nice play by Chad Cota, tackle for loss, playing off the block of Paulson and then making the tackle. You can see on the replay here, he's gonna play off Paulson's block. Uh, shed the block and then come around and make the tackle. Just a, a real fine uh, football play by a redshirt freshman. But the next play is the backbreaker as they run the sweep. Paulson pulls up and finds Maurice Wilson in the end zone for the touchdown. Third and 11. Uh, you wouldn't think we should be fooled on that. We're in man-to-man -man coverage and our corner uh, thought the receiver was cracking initially. Saw the run start at him and he came up to support the run and uh, lo and behold it was a post corner move and uh, a t an easy touchdown. So now still 10 minutes left to go and uh, try to get the home run ball here. Incomplete out of bounds. Overthrows Anthony Jones who was pretty well covered on the play. Now we run the draw play to Burwell. Picks up two. So it's third down and eight. Brothers to throw under some pressure. Almost intercepted, but the ball hit the turf. The Beavers got it back, and he had an opportunity to uh, regain possession with about five and a half minutes to go, but uh, roughing the punter called on this play, and so it is brought back. Oregon State maintains possession, runs off a couple of more plays in a few more minutes, and so with 2.47 left to play, you get one final offensive possession. Brothers. Donovan Moore can't hold on. On second down, this time uh, Brothers intended for Brian Brown. Can't quite uh, pull it in. Then on third and 10, great uh, concentration here by Jones. Somehow he comes up with the football. Good second effort catch there, and then we on fourth down. Uh, run a play, it's audible. We're in the hurry up uh, offense and miscommunication. Uh, the receiver didn't know the play. So the ball is incomplete and the final score, Oregon State winning it by the count of 14 to three. Well, there were, believe it or not, some highlights during this season and we've captured many of those uh, in a musical essay. So let's take a look at those right now.
boing. Hit me! Boing. Coach, I'm Todd McKim. We'll see you next year. This is the Rich Brooks Show, featuring the Oregon Ducks. Brought to you in part by Taylor Electric.